Yes, yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. Today, we're speaking about Romeo Lavia, of course, of Southampton, and a move to Liverpool appears to be getting closer and closer. However, Chelsea, apparently, are really interested in him as well. And we just thought, you know, obviously, there's a lot of debate on social media. I go on Twitter, and there's so many people talking about, first of all, that it was a massive mistake for City to let him leave last year, and that City are now making another mistake by not going back in for Lavia. Now, we are in a bit of a weird situation because we've got Rodri, best CDM in the world, and you've got Calvin Phillips, who's brought in for 40 million quid, had a terrible year because he couldn't get fit. Um, and it's whether or not you keep Phillips and then not get Lavia, but Lavia has a really high ceiling and could go on to be the world, one of the world's best, or do you cash in on, on, on Phillips and bring Lavia back in? So that's the topic of conversation. Make sure you let us know what you think in the comment section below. But I mean, first of all, bro, let, let's let's address the first bit of that question. Did Manchester City make a mistake letting Lavia leave last year? I think it's a tough one. I think it's a tough one because there's pros and cons to keeping Romeo Lavia. Um, at the time, obviously, he's a CFA product. He'd know the system. He'd know the team very well. But with City, we have so many of these players coming through. I mean, you look at Cole Palmer. You look at you know even Liam Delap, Carlos Borges. And then they're all trying to get to that Phil Foden sort of level of break from the academy team into the first team, and it's seamless. But it's quite clear that not many of them get to do that. So City are very strategic and very smart in this, and not enough people talk about this, whereby it's almost like we're willing to let them leave, and not even on a loan basis. You know, you're a Lavia's, you're a, a Dozies, and these kind of players, but we'll put the buyback on them on the basis that if, they, if we feel they do come good, we can go and get them. So... We obviously, we put our faith in Calvin Phillips. It hasn't worked out to now, but we did buy Calvin Phillips for a reason. We bought Cal Calvin Phillips because we felt he could make the grade. He could make the step up from Leeds to play for Man City. But would it be reactionary after one season of it not working for Calvin Phillips, which we've seen with so many players at City? Most of our top, top players in the first team, if you look at them, their very first season was nothing to shout home about. And plenty of what went wrong for Calvin Phillips wasn't even his fault. So personally, I kind of lie in the camp of give Calvin Phillips more time, but I do get it that if we don't act now on Romeo Lavia, we're losing out on him for good. Because if he goes to a top six club now, and it's looking like Liverpool, I said this on stream the other day, you could potentially see a midfield three in Liverpool of McAllister, um, Sabozlai and Lavia for the next 10, 15 years. And if they grow and develop together, they could become formidable and the knock-on effect that is we've lost out on the player. So the conversations going on in the boardroom right now will be, do we protect ourselves from losing out on the asset of Romeo Lavia by going and getting him now? But that would mean we have to find somewhere for Phillips to go because you can't hold on to Rodri, Phillips, Lavia, and then you still kind of have stones there too. It's too many. So the board have a, a decision to make and they kind of have to make it fast. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, let's have a look at this then. So... This is when he was sold. Manchester City got an initial £10.5 million fee for Lavia, potentially rising to £14 million. Now, we won't know whether or not City are going to get that extra £3.5 million because we don't know what them add-ons are. Um, City do have a £40 million buyback clause, but it's only valid in 2024, so City can't activate that now, which, you know, if no one buys him this summer, then it looks like we've got an absolute steal next year because we can go and get him for £40 million, and it looks like it's going to be £40 to £50 million this year. Um, we have an opportunity to match any future bids. This is, for me, the key one. It eff effectively means that City can, whatever gets accepted, City can go in and just match and Southampton have to accept it. City do get a 20% uh, sell-on clause, which uh, looks pretty interesting as well there. So, you know, if it's 40 million, 50 million, you know, that's, a, that's another, basically, call it 10 million, just for argument's sake. So you are effectively getting close to 20 million quid for this guy. So... I can see why, obviously, that looks like a very good deal. City have effectively got £20 million for Lavia now. Um, but it's this bit here. Opportunity to match any future bids. And should Manchester City go back into the market and get Lavia? The big one for me here is, is obviously Calvin Phillips. And it's whether or not you believe that Calvin Phillips should be given another opportunity at Manchester City. And I'm in sort of two minds for me. Because I get, I get first of all, you sort of mentioned it in the sense that... Um, you know, some players do take longer than a year to get into it. And that's fair. And we've seen that with a lot of players. So I do accept that. 
Um, however, at the same time, there were a few issues, a few red flags that I had with Calvin Phillips uh, this year that, that he could have controlled better. The fact that he came back from the World Cup, um, you know, apparently overweight was, for me, unacceptable. Uh, I think he should have been raring to go. I think he should have come back early as well. You know what I mean? He'd not played any football. And, and I know people will be like, oh, yeah, but the club tell the players when to come back. This guy made a £40 million pound move and played about two games before before that. I think he should have shown a little bit of initiative and come back sooner. Uh, and so, so, yeah, there are a little bit, of, a couple of red flags there for me. However, do we give him that extra year? And I just think, I don't know. I don't know. I really want it to work out for him because he seems like a nice lad, bro. He does seem like a nice guy and I want it to work out. But is there room for that? I mean, it should, 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 the only reason I should want Calvin Phillips to be given that extra year is because I genuinely believe that next year he will thrive. And if you ask me genuinely, my honest opinion is not. I don't think he will thrive next year, in my opinion. I mean, so then, I it, mean, then it leads me to thinking, well, should we sell him then? I don't know. But I, I, I don't know. I'm torn on it. I really am. Because I really want it to work for the, for the lad. I'm I'm kind of torn as well. But I said even when we signed him, I was a big fan of Calvin Phillips when he was a Leeds player. I thought he was a, a, a terrific footballer for for England, especially. He got player of the year in the, the Euro 2020 tournament, I believe, for England that season. So he's got something about him. And the thing with the coming back overweight, I fully get that. It it, it does sound unacceptable from, from the outside looking in. But for me, I'm still happy to kind of put it down as one of those things that maybe at Leeds, maybe at Aston Villa, maybe at these kind of clubs, you know, it's a little bit more acceptable to do those kind of things. They won't mark it as too much of a red flag. But what he's had to learn this season is the expectations put on you when you play for Man City compared to, say, what you have when you played for Leeds. At Man City, obviously, we demand the best. We demand success. We demand, we demand all the players buy into, you know, trying to achieve all the greatest honours. So everybody has to show that enthusiasm to be in the best physical condition all the time and do things like what you said, come back early when maybe you don't really want to. You want that extra week off. I'd like to think that he will take from that last season into next season and, and hopefully future seasons too. So... All of the last 12 months for Calvin Phillips, all the trials and tribulations he had, I kind of want to put down as a learning curve. And I think we would do that regardless if this Romeo Labia situation hadn't mm. arose. If mm. Romeo Labia was not linked heavily with Liverpool and looking like getting the move to Liverpool, we'd be saying, well, we have Romeo Labia next summer if Phillips doesn't work out. We're only having this conversation because if we want Labia, we kind of have to act now because he's not staying at Southampton. He's not going to play in the championship. He needs to play Premier League football and someone's going to come and get him. So that's the position that we're in now. We have to basically force a decision. Do we want to pursue with Calvin Phillips or do we go a match for Romeo Lavia? And the question is, do you believe that Romeo Lavia is going to come in this coming season doesn't need a season to, to, to bet in like other players have and impact more than Calvin Phillips possibly would? Yeah, yeah. No, it's look, it's a tricky one. It really is. Um, to sit on the fence there, because we ain't sitting on the fence, bro. Would you sign Lavia back at Manchester City this summer? Or do you let him go to Liverpool? Uh, I'd I'd let him go to Liverpool. I mean, I think I think Romeo Lavia is a very good player, and I think he's going to be a very good player. But he never he never blew me away for Southampton. I think he probably would suit going to somewhere like Liverpool right now. Um, mm. And it, it's one of those ones you can't get every great player. You know what I mean? You can't have mm. every single one in the world. But if 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 it was 2024 and, and Phillips had had another season like he's just had now, I'd say, yeah, go and get Romeo Lavia because he seems to be the next hot prospect. But I'm not quite ready to 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 cash in on Calvin Phillips just yet. I've, I've we've, we've done this with Jack Grealish before. We've done this with other players before. Yeah. I, I have faith he'll come good. I'm not even looking for my CDM, my backup CDM, to come in and do what Rodri does because for me that's impossible right now. But I just want someone who will relieve Rodri of 15, 20 games a season because Rodri cannot play 60 games a season. That's It's not yeah. going to run. He'll be burnt out. I'm, I'm going to give you my answer. My answer is stick with Calvin Phillips. However, you mentioned the word faith. You have faith in it. I don't have faith. I have hope. I have, I have a hope. <laughs> That I just hope it works. You know what I mean? I don't particularly have faith in him, but um, let's see. Hopefully it works out because we all, we you know, as a City fan, I believe that you should want your players to do well and you should want your players to to to, 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 to prove you wrong if you do have doubts. I have doubts in Calvin Phillips. I have massive doubts in Calvin Phillips. I think he's too slow, but 
I hope that it works out for him because he's a Manchester City player. And, and he genuinely seems like a nice guy. And, and, and that's another reason that I really want him to, to, to work. So both of us are saying, no, do not buy Lavia. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you want Manchester City to buy Romeo Lavia? And if so, are you moving on Calvin Phillips? And what price would you accept? Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Interesting conversation. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. Well, well, well.